All right, everyone, it's Crash here. It's RTA Motorsports, and welcome. Uh, today, we're going to actually dump, jump into Dirt Rally, some gameplay. It's kind of a really cool experience actually being able to to do this in VR because the tracks actually have some good scale to them and definitely brings it a lot more to life when you can actually feel the tracks or actually see the tracks, I should say, in 3D space. It kind of makes it a lot more immersive, a little bit better. We're just going to jump in. We're going to get going. Hope you enjoy. Uh, so here we go. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. We're over at Wales. The River Severn Valley, and uh, this is going to be a long circuit. This is going to be a circuit that I really never do uh, just because of the fact that not only that it's long, but it's actually quite difficult. <laughs> We're going to use our favorite Subaru Impreza 1995 when I was only a ye lad. All right. But where's my car? <laughs> I'm driving essentially a hovercraft, a little tiny hovercraft. That uh, doesn't even have wheels on it. It's just a small cut. Where the hell is my car? It's funny because back there, there is some light shining on the floor just floating out of nowhere. This is going to be something that VR is going to have to, uh, well, is going to change with a lot of developers, especially with things like the Vive here. Um, we could actually get out of the vehicle. So, you know. Good job, I guess, with optimizations and whatnot, but dang, there's no car there. So we're in the 1995 Subaru Impreza WRX, and this is probably my favorite car in this title. Uh, it just feels like the right size. It's small, uh, nimble, but it's not too perfect. You still slide it around. You still got to fight with it at times, uh, but it doesn't feel like it ever goes too far where it gets away from you. Uh, but, you know, just like Project Cars and Assetto Course, I'm going to say it again, the scale is beautiful, beautiful in this. I mean, the only thing is, I mean, this is a, a kind of hacked version uh, because I'm using um, Revive to get this to work. Um, so the scale was a little bit off. Well, not, the seat position was a little bit off. I was kind of set back through my neck like that. All I had to do was kind of use my buttons that were mapped to move seat forward a little bit. And there you go. It actually saves that position. So, you know, I turn around and I look around the inside of this vehicle and I uh, look at my partner, my co-driver, and I feel like I could smack him in the chest if he reads his his notes wrong. But you see the audience. Everyone looks great. Everyone looks the way they should and the scale that they should. I can see the guys right there and they everything just, it just feels awesome. I mean, the door handle is where it should be. I see smudging and watermarks on the glass right here. It's to the point, it kind of gives it that ghosty appearance, so I feel like if I put my head next to here, I could see that there's a window there, and I, I feel like I don't want to put my head through it. Even though it could, it just, you know, kind of messes with your mind a little bit. You know, and the interior of this car looks great, too. I can see all the buttons down there, and there's a ton of freaking buttons. Makes my button box look kind of pitiful, to be honest with you. But the arms especially, you know, and this is something that, I kind of went over in my set of course of video a little bit, but it really does give you like a phantom limb sensation where, you know, they're not your limbs, but they're in perfect position and you feel like if you've seen a blade out of nowhere come down and chop one off <laughs> and you weren't expecting it, um, it would make you jump because as you're driving and if you're not really thinking about it and you're just going for it, kind of feels like those are your arms. It's just adds to the immersion. It's completely freaky, but uh, it's true. Five, four, All right, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Now, VR has really made this an easier experience for me. And the reason being is I could actually read the track in a way that feels normal and natural to me. You know, I touched on this in a set of Corsa where you get an awesome sense of scale. And it's not only with the car you're in, but it's also with the track. And that's especially important here. I'm trying to read the track. 
left over press, the pace over press. So you can tell the severity of things coming up, where you need to place a car on the track. I mean, with the sense of scale, I can tell elevation changes, how big the curbs are, how big different jumps are and bumps. I'm also getting a strong sense of speed so I can tell my velocity as I'm coming at things and how I should adjust myself accordingly. So it just all feels like a lot more of a natural experience. I find myself reacting in a way that feels a lot more normal and natural and it's a lot easier that way rather than trying to decipher a 2D screen and how you should react in a 3D environment and it just makes it a lot a lot harder a little bit more trickier and you find that you end up feeling like you have to learn the tracks in order to be somewhat competitive rather than jump in and go with your partners here's uh, track notes and be able to actually run the track. So this track here, uh, uh, we're using it because it's kind of my nemesis of a track. Um, I rarely was able to ever even finish this track. So if I finish this track, that'll be a compliment to the VR experience because normally I just go cartwheeling off the track somewhere. Come on. So, you know, us sim racers, we're always looking for more information. How can we get more information? And to be honest with you, I would rather race with this VR headset than my sim vibe if I had to choose between one sensory input. I mean, if you ever use sim vibe before, you know, just like I do, it feels like when you're not racing with it that you're missing something, almost like you're not racing with sound. Uh, it's really an awesome experience and I'm using it right now. But with this, I feel like I'm getting such a flood of information that racing on flat screens is going to be like watching a movie. It's not going to feel like I'm getting any useful information out of it at all. Besides the fact that this is just freaking awesome and it looks gorgeous. I mean, all the trees. How awesome the inside of the car looks, I mean, you just can't, it's, it's surprising to me how much better of an experience this is than what I was experiencing with my OSVR. It's, it's almost like trying to compare a Gear VR to, you know, the Oculus or the Vive as far as experiences. I mean, the OSVR was good with Dirt Rally. It was. But the tracking and the resolution difference with the OSVR 1.3. Now the version 2 is out of the headset. I would love to try that and see how that actually improves on the experience. But, you know, the 1.3 that I had, for some reason the scale wasn't as good. The perceived scale of the inside of the cars, the track, it's just, it, it never seems quite right. Ah! Oh, that sucks. So I never had that. No, 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 no. Darn it. Never had that aha moment with my uh, with my OSVR 
as I do as I do right now with this, where I realize that this is not only really cool, but a useful tool at the same time. All right, let me try to stop talking for a little bit and see if we can actually get around this track without killing my uh, co-driver here. Ah! <laughs> we made it. We made it. That was awesome. All right, here we go. Now let's try to take it a little bit, a little bit more seriously. Oh wow, we actually finished. I mean, we had some some foul up points there, and uh, wow, second place. You have got to be kidding me. Oh wow, Ooh, and I'm sweating too. This definitely works up a sweat. Definitely counts as a cardio workout. Oh man, I wonder what my my heart rate is. I wish I had my um, my watch on me so I could see what my heart rate actually is. You could see right there; it made a huge difference. Normally, I don't even finish um i normally damage the car way too much or blow all the tires to the point where it's unraceable i hope you enjoyed i hope i kind of conveyed my experience to you um you know it's not completely perfect you still get a screen door effect and with this title it is very demanding in vr mode i don't know if it's because it's not optimized for the vive because i'm using um i'm using revive to make it work on the vive because it's kind of set up for the oculus so that being said, you know, you have to kind of dumb down your graphical settings a little bit. I had to lower mine from ultra to medium, which I didn't really notice in the headset a big difference between like medium and high. Medium and ultra is a big difference, but medium and high, not really much of a big difference. So it wasn't really that big of a difference to do it. It still looks beautiful. Uh, it's still an awesome experience, but, you know, just know you, you're going to have to dumb down your graphics a little bit, which kind of sucks a little bit. You also have the, they call them the God rays. You have the little rays of light because this is a Fresnel lens and anything in the menu system, like right now we have a white border in the bottom and the top, but on the periphery of the lenses, you kind of get that glaring effect on the peripheral edges of the lenses as it's, you know, kind of shining light down on the little uh, gaps uh, that you have the, with the Fresnel lenses. So when you're racing, you don't notice it at all. It doesn't happen. Um, but in menu screens like this, it kind of happens, and it's almost uh, distracting in a way when you're in the menu system. Uh, but besides that, the actual gameplay is it's unmatched. I, I am so sold, it's ridiculous, and I hope you all get to experience something like this soon. I just I don't see myself going back to triple screens, surprising enough to say, because I was a big... Um, big fan of triple screens and actually making your rig beautiful to look at. So <laughs> now I just made my rig invisible to myself. So, you know, what can you do? So as usual, I'm Crash and Star Team Motorsports. Have a great day. And as usual, see you all out on the track.